What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So apparently Kurt Angle was uh, on a Joe Rogan's podcast recently, and uh, he was talking about his drug addiction. Uh, we're going to check out uh, a video, a clip from the podcast talking about uh, when Kurt Angle became Perk Angle. The video's title, I was taking 65 Vicodin per day, which is just insanity. We're going to check this out get Kurt Angle's perspective on it. Kurt Angle was a wild individual, especially in TNA. He was drugged up, but at the same time, he was out there putting on classic banger matches and drugged up, <laughs> perked up. Kurt Angle was a thing. Let's check this out, man. See what he has to say. Now, is there anything you would have changed? Uh, well, throughout my career was there anything that i would change yeah well uh, we'll get into this topic i guess um, uh oh after i broke my neck the second time the first time in wwe Jeez. i was introduced to painkillers oh and, um, man uh when i started taking them i i really liked it i mean it it it, it masked the pain i couldn't feel the pain it kind of gave me an energetic feel uh, it didn't wow. make me feel nauseous like it does a lot of people and I started taking, I was taking one every four to six hours, like I was told. But after a while, you build a tolerance and one doesn't work anymore. Then you have to take mm. two, and two led to four, four was led to eight. Uh, this was extra strength Vicodin. The Oxycontins are a lot more powerful than the Vicodin. Mm -hmm. But I was taking 65 extra strength Vicodin a day. Whoa. <laughs> Jesus Christ, bro. I want y'all to understand, that's ridiculous ridiculous and he was out there still trying to give you the best performance in the ring perk angle was legitimately a beast in that ring but he was definitely overdoing it to compensate for the pain that he was in which shows y'all man the dude was putting his body through the ringer just to entertain us much respect to any wrestler back then or even now that's willing to put their body on the line to entertain us bro like that's just insanity that's how out of control i got and i was hiding it from the company oh wow and and i mean it was i was Jesus. in serious trouble and does that even make you high at that point or does it just keep you from going into okay. withdrawals it mm. kept me from going through withdrawals but there were times where i passed out I mean, the, the company knew, um, wow. some of my friends knew. Um, you know, I, I'll give you an example. I, I, um, there was one point, that, this is how, it, how bad it got. Um, there was one point in my career where uh, I, uh, my brother called me. I was at a house show, an untelevised show for WWE. It was the night before I was gonna have the biggest match of my career with Brock Lesnar the wow. next day. It was an Iron Man match on SmackDown. Classic and, match, um, by the way. My brother calls me and says, hey, your sister just died of a heroin overdose. Whoa. And it it crushed me. I mean, I, I, I was I was crying. I, I was in such pain thinking about my sister, who was only 40 years old, Damn. dying from a heroin overdose. And the thing is, I wasn't able to talk to her because I told her eight months prior, if she doesn't get clean, I'm going to um, I'm not going to talk to you. So I didn't oh, talk to her for eight months, no. and then this happens. Oh, oh my and I was God. so here I am. I'm in the hotel room. Oh my goodness, bro, that's awful. And it's crazy because he's he's now addicted. At that time, he was addicted to painkillers. So just for him to be like, you know, hey, I'm not about to talk to you no more because. Heroin is definitely a, a dangerous drug, a very dangerous drug, and it's hard for people to kick kick the habit. But for him to say that at the time, you know, you could say that was hypocritical or whatnot. And then for him to be doing what he's doing, and then he finds out that news, oh, that's awful, bro. I can imagine. I can only imagine just you tell someone that you care about, but like, nah, I, I got to keep my distance from you. You don't hear nothing from them, and then... The next time you hear something about them, they're gone. That's that's tough, bro. Room, and I look at my pills. I said, "Fuck it." I took twenty of them, threw them in my mouth, chewed them up, and swallowed them. Oh. Whoa! I didn't wake up till five o'clock in the afternoon the next day. 
What? I had the biggest match of my career. Oh my that god. That night. So what yeah. time did you have to be to the arena and did you Oh do it? my god. He just said F it. Yo, this is man, I well, I, I did not know. I would have never known Kurt was going through that. And then it still ended up putting on one of the greatest SmackDown matches of all time. But well, we had to be there at one, but I didn't get there till five thirty. Right. Yeah. But um, yeah, I ended up doing it. Uh, the WWE was trying to call me the whole time. They were like, they wanted to tell me that, hey, you can go home, plan a funeral for your sister. You don't have to do this match. But I kept thinking, I know my sister would want me to, and and, wow. and, and I knew that I I wouldn't have to feel that pain of losing my sister at least for that hour. So I, I went ahead and did it. Wow. And it, it was actually one of my best performances of my career, which is kind of crazy. But uh, that was that was a really rough time. And the painkillers are the one thing that I do regret I did in the company. I wish I was never introduced to them. But do you think you had to take them? I mean, it sounds like you were in such excruciating pain yeah. all the time. There were times I needed to take them, and there were times I didn't. But I was... It, it was it's a double-edged sword because, obviously, the dude is in immense amount of pain out there trying to perform for us on a, a weekly basis so i get him being introduced to help but then it started becoming substance abuse because he's now taking them not only to alleviate the pain because he feels good he bro you're taking 65 a day that's ridiculous so far deep into it that <laughs> I yeah. had to. I mean, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I, I would go to sleep at night. I would have 15 pills sitting on the desk next oh to me goodness, for when I wake bro. up because I knew I was going to have withdrawal when I got up. Oh I'd wake up God. sweating, shaking, and I'd wow. grab those, throw them in my mouth, chew them up, and swallow 15 at a time. 15 at a time. Jesus wow. Christ. Yeah. Most people, 15 at a time will kill you. Yeah. <laughs> well, it right? didn't kill me. I, you know, I took 20 at one time when my sister died, so... Um, I've been really lucky. I've been blessed. I, Facts. I, I, honestly, I don't think I should be here today. How'd you get off of them? <sighs> okay. Uh, well, what happened was I left the WWE because they wanted me to go to rehab. I didn't want to go. Mm -hmm. So I ended up going to another company called Impact Wrestling. Mm -hmm. And I, I got my painkiller problem under control there because I, got, I found a doctor that got me on MS Cotton. There are two um, um, <clears throat> uh, morphine pills. They're very tiny, but they, they'll keep you from going through withdrawal. So I would take one in the morning, one at night, and no more painkillers. They mm. were painkillers because they were morphine, but they were high dose. It was just two of them that I had to take. Well, I started having anxiety about breaking my neck over and over again, so they, oh. they put me on Xanax. Oh, so now I'm taking Xanax. And then I, I switched to, to TNA, Impact Wrestling, and everybody drank there, so I started drinking alcohol. Oh, so I'm mixing, having these cocktails, God. and I'm, I'm so out of control that I'm driving okay uh, from yeah. town to town drinking a 12 pack of beer and i got four duis in five years yeah uh, i lost my reputation everything i worked for yeah, i was I at the lowest that. point in my life and uh i remember calling my wife from jail after my fourth dui and she said listen i can't do this anymore yeah. you either go to rehab or i'm taking the kids and i'm leaving yeah. uh, so i went to rehab because i didn't want to lose my wife and my kids and i was scared in rehab i i, li I literally thought I was so nervous. Uh, the, first of all, the withdrawal was the worst experience Ooh. I ever had. I'll never go through that again because I'm never going to take another painkiller. That was the worst thing I've ever done or drink another drop of alcohol. Damn. Uh, that, that was the absolute worst thing I've, I've ever been through. And um, I forget what I was going to say, though. But uh, So with the rehab, do they? how do they get you off of it? They don't do it cold turkey, right? How do they, this is crazy. Yeah, they do. Do they? Yes, they do. I thought wow. they were going to wean me off. Yeah, no. that's what I thought too. <laughs> they put you in a room and let you sleep, and they check on you every couple hours. And uh, it How took many me days? about six days for me to Ooh. go through the withdrawal symptoms. Oh, my, bro. I can only imagine. And this is crazy. This is why for some people it's hard to get off pills. It's hard to get off heroin. It's hard to get off certain drugs because your body is so used to a certain feeling and feeling a certain way. When you finally have to get off and, you know, you got to go to rehab and they cut you off cold turkey. It's probably I can only imagine how your body's just wrecked and it's going through so many symptoms and and you tweaking because you want you need you feel like you need another pill or you're gonna lose it it's i can only imagine bro this is wild just wild
Wow, bro. Oh, my God. It, it seemed like forever. It seemed so like six, six days, months. You just in a room by yourself. Yeah. Woo, just yeah. thinking. Yeah. Oh, oh and, and you know God. what? And, and you want to stay in there. And they, they start forcing you out. You got you got to come move around. You got to come out and talk to people. You got to you know live your life. And you don't you you're so exhausted for the first two and a half weeks. I didn't want to move. I just want to stay in my bed. Wow. But they were forcing me to get out of bed and and be in a converse converse or conversating with people and mm -hmm. trying to you know go and eat and go to meetings and do all that stuff you do in rehab. So it was it was really tough. How? long did it take before you felt normal um well i would say two weeks where i really felt normal but the the thing is the last two weeks because i spent a month in rehab the last two weeks i was so nervous that i was gonna fuck up again like mm. I, I i literally didn't want to leave rehab wow i was scared that i was gonna go back to it right when i got out so many guys do yeah so that's crazy. why like i hear all these stories and i'm like oh it's gonna happen to you too man and, uh, you know, but, but the one thing that I kept uh, going Ooh. across in my mind was going through withdrawal. I don't want to do that Damn. again. And I know if I start taking them, I'm going to have to experience that again, and I don't want to. It was that bad. It was that bad. What is it like? Like, what does um, withdrawal feel like? Okay, you're sweating because you're hot and you're cold at the same time. Ooh. You're shitting your pants. You're throwing up. Damn. Um, uh, you can't think straight. Uh, your body's shaking. Uh, you're, you're getting hot sweats, cold sweats, uh, everything's, you feel like you don't have anything inside of you. No insides, no organs, nothing. You feel like you're hollow. Oh, no, nah, bro. That's wild. That was, that was insanity, man. The, the, the cost of all those painkillers and just in his body and, and what he was going through, bro. Once again, it's crazy. He was perked up, but he was putting on some of the best matches of his career, man. Perk angle was a thing. And it's it's crazy how he was able to overcome that. It's awesome. It's dope to see that. I know a lot of people are like, oh, yeah, we love Perk angle. But at the same time, the dude was wrecking his body just to be able to still wrestle for our entertainment. That was his one constant, wrestling. The drugs was a means to... For him to wrestle without being in so much pain. That's wild. But I'm glad he's doing great. I'm glad he's doing better. And, you know, Kurt Angle, he's a GOAT, bro. It's, he's one of the best to ever <laughs> lace up some wrestling boots, man. It is it is dope to for him to be able to tell his story. And, and if anyone's going through that type of situation where they, they have to step away from certain substances because, you know, it's it's wrecking their lives it's wrecking their families and and their loved ones are being affected by it the fact that he was able to do that the fact that he was able to overcome that that should be some type of motivation for someone that's going through it as well so comment down below let me know what's y'all favorite match from when when uh kurt angle was perked up what's y'all favorite match when he was taking so many of those painkillers, because there was a lot of classic matches he had around that time he was taking painkillers. So whether it was in WWE or or whether it was in TNA or well Impact Wrestling back then, let me know what was your favorite match from Kurt Angle around that time period. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on the channel. Go to 150K and I'm still the Undisputed YouTube Wrestling Champion of the World. Appreciate y'all keeping with me. See y'all next week. Peace.